guys today we're going to learn about the human nervous system and uh, this is the first lesson of the human nervous system which is on the neuron and the synapse and this is presented by me kaushik chari i'm currently studying my mbbs from aims and you can follow me on an academy using this link so moving on uh, the new nervous system has actually evolved over the eras from simple mesh like network in the hydra which is in adarian to a more complex structure with ganglia in the annelids insects to the nervous system that we see in humans today but over there as the function and the uh, structural unit of the nervous system has remained the same which is the neuron so let us look at the structure of the neuron the neuron contains a cell body or a soma which contains the nucleus cytoplasm nissl substance and filament like processes called dendrites and the longest process of the cell body is called the axon what do you mean by the output of the neuron i'll just tell you in the next slide and axon terminals which are the terminal branches of the axon which form the synapse synapse is a point of contact between two neurons that will be explained in the coming lesson i mean this lesson itself so uh, so over here i would like to tell you about two important mcqs the first one is about the nissl substance so the nissl substance actually consists of the rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cell so you get a mcq you know, which says which says what does the nissl substance consists of and it is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the second important mcq is the what forms what part of the neuron forms the synapse so the answer would be axon terminals axon terminals will form the synapse so so yeah we are, here we have a picture of a neuron and you can see that this is the soma this is the cell body it consists of small filaments or the small branches these are called the dendrites and the longest process of the neuron is the axon so and the axon ends in terminal branches which are the axon terminals which form the synapse with the next neuron so moving on the key points myelination what is what do you mean by myelin myelin m y e l i n is a complex lipid that is made by the schwann cells which wrap around the axons and this myelin what is the function of this myelin i will tell you in the in the lesson which is based on the transmission of impulses but you would you should know for now that myelin actually increases the transmission speed within the neuron and uh, the myelin uh, uh, where the myelin is not present it is known as the nodes of ranvir i will show in the next picture you'll understand it better and um, the most important thing you should remember over here is the types of neurons so we have three types of neurons based on the number of processes that arise from the cell body so we have three types of neurons the first type is the unipolar neuron as you can guess unipolar means is a single process from the cell body bipolar neuron which means that there are two processes from the cell body and multipolar the many processes from the cell body it is also very important to remember the examples of each of this the first one is the example is the dorsal root ganglion the cells in the dorsal root ganglion the second is the retinal neurons and the third most of the neurons in the nervous system are multipolar so coming on to the myelination this yellow portion over here which you can see around the axon of this neuron is the myelin and this is made by the schwann cells that wrap around the axon and in between these myelin myelin this there are places which are labeled in purple over here which are not myelinated these are known as the nodes of ranvier as i had shown you here the nodes of ranvier so which type of a neuron is this as you can see there are multiple processes arising from the neuron one is the axon itself and there are multiple dendrites arising from the neuron this is a multipolar neuron next example over here you can see this is a bipolar neuron because there are only two processes that are arising from the cell body you can see there are only two processes arising from the cell body so this is a bipolar neuron and this is present in the retina that is an example of where a bipolar neuron is present so now moving on the next if you can see here this is a unipolar neuron it has a single cell body and a single process that is arising from it which is a unipolar neuron right so the unipolar neuron is basically present in the embryonic stages and uh, it is uh, yeah it, the dorsal root ganglion is also the example of a unipolar neuron but i'll explain to you why i just stumbled over there because there's a new additional concept that you should know 
about the pseudo unipolar neuron a pseudo unipolar neuron has a single process that branches into two so now how do you call it a unipolar neuron or a bipolar neuron that is that is something that is that was controversial so they called it a pseudo unipolar neuron because there is a single process that branches into two so a uh, thing you should know over here is that if you get a question saying the neuron of the dorsal root ganglion is a uh, bipolar unipolar or multipolar then you mark unipolar but if you get a question saying whether it's unipolar or pseudo unipolar then you have to mark it as pseudo unipolar neuron so moving on what is the synapse a synapse is the functional point of contact between two neurons so this is actually how a synapse is defined you should not confuse it with the synaptic cleft so i will show you what is the synapse and what is the synaptic cleft so what does the synapse what is the synapse made up of so i showed you the axon terminals of the neuron in the previous slide so this is the, one of the axon terminal this is the dendrite of the other neuron so i showed you how the information flows uh, if the how the information flows is from the axon terminal of the previous neuron to the dendrite of the next neuron so this is how information flows so this is an axon terminal and this is a dendrite and the small space in between these two is the synaptic cleft so the neurotransmitter what is the neurotransmitter i'll come to it in the next slide but the information comes from here it's passed on to the next dendrite by release of this chemical called a neurotransmitter which is present in the previous axon terminal so we have information coming from here a neurotransmitter is released from here and it enters into the net dendrite of the next neuron that's that's how the transmission of in, impulse goes on so this entire thing is called the synapse please don't confuse the synaptic cleft so what does the synapse consists of it consists of an axon terminal consists of the synaptic cleft and consists of the dendritic spine or the dendrite of the next neuron so a synaptic cleft is a part of the synapse it's not the synapse itself and if you get a assertion reason saying that the synapse is the space between the axon terminal and the dendrite that would be false because a synapse is the functional point of contact between the neuron which includes the axon terminal as well as the synaptic cleft as well as the dendritic spine so now what is the neurotransmitter a neurotransmitter is a chemical substance that is released by the axon terminal and which leads to transmission of impulse between two neurons so uh, basically the information passes through the neuron and once it reaches the axon terminal a chemical substance is released which is the neurotransmitter which leads to chemical transmission of impulse from the previous neuron to the next neuron and the examples of this are acetylcholine dopamine and glutamate so these are three examples which you must remember acetylcholine dopamine and glutamate do memorize these three so these are examples of neurotransmitters that are commonly seen in the human nervous system so that's it for this lesson and thank you for watching